Hey everyone, my name's Chad. This is the step-by-step -step guide for Cloud Office, a project that I wrote. This is the prerequisite video for cloud deployments, uh, specific to Windows users. If you are deploying in a cloud or you plan to, uh, follow this before getting into part two where you follow cloud-specific instructions. I'm at the GitHub page on my Windows machine, and I'll scroll up to the directories. We've got a whole bunch of directories here. Uh, if you haven't chosen a cloud provider yet, you don't know which one you'll be using, you can pick any of these. The instructions for this portion of the video are the same for all of them. So uh, pick either AWS, Azure, DigitalOcean, Google Cloud, or Oracle Cloud, and I'll pick one at random. This is fine. And then scroll down to step-by-step. -step. We need to launch an elevated PowerShell prompt, and I'll do that by clicking Start typing in the word power, and then right click and run as administrator. We're prompted. I'll say yes. To enable Windows Subsystem Linux, we run this command. It's a long one. Make sure you grab the whole thing. And then to paste in PowerShell, right click, hit enter, and the operation completed. Though I will note, there's a flag here, no restart. Uh, you do need to reboot your machine if you've never used or enabled Windows Subsystem Linux before. Uh, that's the next step. Go ahead and do so now. I've already done it, so I'll skip past that. And then afterwards, we no longer need the elevated PowerShell prompt. In fact, we shouldn't use it. I'm going to close it down and open a standard prompt. Left click instead of right click. In the standard prompt, let's look at our steps. We'll need to download Ubuntu 18.04. That's the version of Linux that we'll be deploying on our local machine with Windows Subsystem Linux. Copy and paste that in. It's downloaded directly from Microsoft, and we'll give that just a moment to run. I'll be back when it's done. That was pretty quick. We'll rename the AppX file that got downloaded to a zip and expand that zip into a directory and then change into the directory. And finally, we run the installer. This will prompt us eventually for a username and password. Got the prompt, that was really quick by the way. Um, it's asking for a username, make it something simple. I'll set mine to Chad. And it's asking for a password, you'll need to remember this password. And then confirm the password. And that's it, Pow uh, excuse me, Windows Subsystem Linux is now installed and we're in it. Um, if you ever close this window, you need to get back into Windows Subsystem Linux open a PowerShell prompt, type in WSL, and then I like to, just so I'm always in the same place, CD to my home directory, which is uh, CD space and then the squiggly line. It's kind of a shortcut. Exit with exit, and we'll continue. We need to install Terraform, Git, and create an SSH key pair. Copy the first command. This is Terraform's apt key. Enter that pseudo password that you just created. You'll need to enter that anytime you run a pseudo command and you haven't run sudo in a while. Next, we add the repository. The key was a way to verify the files that are getting downloaded. The repository is the location of the files. And then we run apt update and install Terraform and Git. And to clone the project from GitHub, this is the same address in our address bar in our browser. Clone, and done, and then we create an SSH key pair. We'll use SSH to access the instance if we need to. It's asking where to store. I suggest the default, leave it default, hit enter. It's also asking for a passphrase. I don't necessarily recommend setting a passphrase on the SSH key, and then hit enter again. And that's it. Now that we've finished part one, follow along with part two using one of the links in the description of this video or on the GitHub page, you'll want to have created a cloud account for whichever cloud provider you choose before continuing. Also, if you run into trouble, if you have questions, uh, you have ideas on how to make this project better, you can reach me at Discord in the description of this video or on the GitHub page. Um, you could also create a GitHub issue if you find a bug, something like that, or comment on YouTube, that's okay too. The best way to reach me is certainly on Discord Thank you very much. Good luck and have a great day.